So the Trip Team family asks me all the time, Willie, what do you feel when it comes to liquid cultures? Do you like them? Do you use them yourself? Do you prefer it over agar or slurry as a means to speed up growth and colonization? Or do you think I should go with something else? The truth of the matter is, liquid cultures are an amazing way to inoculate your grains and speed things up. And if you guys are going to be using liquid cultures, then you should be using the right liquid culture. So I'm going to show you guys the best liquid culture that you guys can make. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on Trip Team? First of all, I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time ever seeing a Willie Michael video, welcome to the Trip Team family. If you're into the psychedelic community, you love mycology, then you're going to like what I'm giving right here. So take a second, go down below, subscribe, hit that bell off to the side so that way you guys know when I drop a new video. It's not mandatory, but it definitely helps out. And if you enjoyed this video, you're already a subscriber, just hit that thumbs up or that thumbs down. It really doesn't matter. It always helps the YouTube algorithm so we can get this information out to more people. And as always, all my social media is right here. If you guys want the complete library of all my tech videos, all my extraction videos, all that good stuff, then check out my Patreon because that's where you're going to be able to find all that. I also do things like one-on-one -on -one Skype calls. I have a private chat room and you can get access to it all through there. And if you guys want to check me out on Instagram, make sure you guys go do that. Just make sure you're following the right person. It's Willie underscore Michael. So make sure you guys check it out. I have a lot of cool stuff on there. I'm always doing giveaways and giving you guys updates on things I'm working on, and I think you'll really enjoy it. With that said, let's jump right into this video. So today we're gonna be covering liquid cultures. Now, many years ago when I first started out and I first opened up a YouTube channel, I did a liquid culture video. But things are always changing, you know, things are always evolving and there's better and new ways to do things. And the way that I prefer doing it right now at this moment is the way that I'm going to show you guys in this video. On top of all that, we got much better camera equipment. We got a studio now. Back then I was using a GoPro and cell phones and things like that. So the video isn't the greatest. So I wanted to give you guys a more up-to-date liquid culture tech. Now, many of you guys that have spoke to me about liquid cultures in the past, I've explained to you how I feel about liquid cultures. Now, when it comes to liquid cultures, does it speed up growth? Yes, it does. Does it cut your colonization times in half? Yes, it does. Does it preserve your genetics long term? Yes, it does. You know, we have what's called master LCs and things like that. And when they work, they work fantastic. But there's also a downside to liquid cultures that a lot of people don't talk about. And that downside is contamination. So when you guys grow out a liquid culture, you don't actually know if it's contaminated until you put it to grains or you put it to agar. Because mycelium and mold growth can look very, very similar inside of a liquid culture. The only other way to tell that it's contaminated is to take some, put it on a microscope slide, and check it under a microscope. Now, of course, if you do that, you need to know what you're looking for, and you need to be able to discern if it's mold or mycelial growth, so it can be really difficult. So what I highly recommend doing is if you decide to go the liquid culture route, before you guys use it to inoculate grains or anything like that, Take a second, take a couple days, and put it to agar if you guys don't have a microscope that you could look at it under, or you guys don't know exactly what to be looking for. So I suggest just putting it to agar, let it colonize for a couple days, and make sure that the growth is healthy before you guys actually decide to go and inoculate some grains. You know, the worst thing you could possibly do is get, you know, 20, 30 jars of sterilized grains ready. You've got all them grains. Grains can be pretty expensive depending on what you're using. Then you use your liquid culture. You inoculate all them by the book, you know, sterile technique. You guys are doing a great job and it contaminates. And the reason it contaminates is not because you did something wrong during inoculation, but because the liquid culture is actually contaminated itself. So it's a double-edged sword. If it works, it works great, but there's also downsides to it too. So just check it out 
on some agar before you guys actually go and decide to use it on some grains. Now, once you guys know you have a clean culture, there's no mold, bacteria, anything like that inside your culture, then you guys are all set. You can actually put it inside the refrigerator if you guys want to slow down growth and you could save your liquid cultures for a long time that way. You just pull them out 24 hours before you guys plan on using them, let them get to room temperature, you take a liquid culture syringe and you knock up some grains and then you can put it back in the fridge for later use. That's what's called a master LC. So it's a LC that was created, you know, isolations and things like that had happened. You have the perfect genetics, you put them to liquid culture and now you could save them long term. Me personally, I prefer to work with slant and agar to save my genetics and to speed up my growth. I prefer slurry or using agar, but liquid cultures are a cornerstone and a staple in the mycology community. So if you guys are going to get into this community, you're going to cultivate or work in mycology, then you guys should know how to make a liquid culture the correct way. And that's what I'm going to show you guys right here in this video. So the old school way, and even still to this day, people still use it of making a liquid culture is to use sterile water and a sugar nutrient. So typically we would use honey or we would use caro syrup. Some people would even use maple syrup, which I don't suggest doing, but you would use some type of sugar and sterile water inoculate it and let your mycelium grow in there. But there's a much better way to do it. Typically when you guys would make a liquid culture with caro syrup or honey, you guys would inoculate your grains and sometimes the mycelium would recover and start to colonize the grains and sometimes it wouldn't. But there would always be some type of recovery time. So it wouldn't just be you inoculate and it starts growing right away. There's actually a recovery time and that could be anywhere from a few days up to a week before it transitions over and starts to colonize on the grains. But if you guys use a grain based sugar like light malt extract, there's no recovery time. So as soon as you inoculate your grains within a day or so, it's going to stop colonizing those grains. So you're going to start to see the growth right away. You don't have to worry about a recovery time if you was using a non-grain based sugar like caro syrup or honey. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be showing you guys the way I make my liquid cultures using a grain based sugar like light malt extract. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about the equipment you're going to need to follow along. So the first thing you're going to need is your jars. So we're going to be using one quart jars. Now, if you guys want to make more than one LC, then you guys will need more jars. But I'm just going to be showing you guys how to make one LC in this video. Now, for one of the jars, you're going to need a lid with no holes in it. So you just want a regular mason jar lid that has no self healing injection port, no gas exchange hole on it or anything like that. Then for the other jar, you're going to want your self healing injection port and your gas exchange hole. So you need them two different lids and then you can move forward. So the next thing you guys are going to need is your light malt extract or your extra light malt extract. So in this video, I'm going to be using extra light malt extract, but if you guys want to use light malt extract, that's perfectly fine. Now, if you guys don't have a pressure cooker, steam sterilization, boil sterilization is perfectly fine for liquid cultures. But I do suggest investing in a pressure cooker, especially if you're moving it to LCs because you're going to want to start doing other things. And at this point, you guys should already have a pressure cooker. I'll put a link down below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that where you guys could find a really good pressure cooker for a really cheap price. The next thing you guys are going to need is a coffee filter. This is just a number two regular coffee filter that you would use in your coffee machine. Now, the reason we need a coffee filter is because we're going to filter out our mix before we sterilize. This is going to remove anything that didn't dissolve or break down in the water and just give us a much cleaner liquid culture. But if you guys don't have one, don't worry about it. It's not 100% necessary. Now, for you guys that might be wondering, well, I don't have self healing injection ports. I don't have filters or anything like that. Don't worry about it. I got videos on that. Make sure you go check them out. I show you guys how to make your lids, put your self healing injection ports, your filters. So you guys are going to have to check that out before you start doing this. Unless you already have or have ordered a lid that already has the filter and the self healing injection port on it. The filter and self healing injection port I'm using on this liquid culture is actually a pre-made one from shroomsupply.com. Now I'm just testing it out to see how good it works. 
But you guys can make your own or you guys could go purchase them from anywhere you want. It really doesn't matter. All right, so we talked about all the stuff you guys are gonna need to make your liquid culture. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're working in a clean area. So the area that you're working, make sure you wipe it down with disinfectant wipes or spray it down with Lysol or 90-10 bleach water mix. Whatever you guys use to disinfect, make sure you do it just to get the area clean. Once you guys have your area clean, now what you want to do is you want to measure out 600 milliliters or 600 cc's of water. Now this water can be tap water, it could be purified, it could be, you know, distilled. It's really up to you guys. I use regular tap water, but my tap has a pure filter on it, so my water gets filtered as it's coming out. But if you guys want to use tap water, it's perfectly fine. Now, once you guys have 600 milliliters of water measured out, now what you want to do is you want to add it to your quart jar. Now, once you guys have your 600 milliliters of water inside your quart jar, now what you want to do is you want to weigh out one gram of extra light malt extract or light malt extract. One gram. Once you guys have the one gram weighed out, now you want to add it to your water. Once it's added to your water, now what you want to do is you want to put the solid lid on. So you want to put the lid on that doesn't have any holes drilled into it. Now what I like to do is I like to flip my lids upside down so that the metal part is facing the inside and the white and red part is facing up. And the reason for that is we're going to throw it in the pressure cooker for a few minutes and I don't want it to seal. So by you flipping it up, it's not gonna seal to the jar and it's gonna be much easier to remove when you guys need to remove it. Now, once you guys have your lid on there, just swirl it around, get everything dissolved, and then we can move forward. So I swirled it around for a few minutes. It looks like everything's dissolved pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it inside of our pressure cooker for 20 minutes at 15 PSI. This is just to get everything heated up. This isn't the sterilization part. This is just to get everything heated up. This is to break down the light malt extract and get everything dissolved in our water. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna filter it out. So just throw it inside your pressure cooker, 15 PSI for 20 minutes. Then once it cools down to where you guys could handle it, then we'll come back and filter it out. So we pressure cook 20 minutes at 15 PSI. I let it cool down to where I could pick it up with a pot holder or a towel. And now we're gonna filter it out. So what I did was I took my coffee filter, I took my jar that the liquid culture is gonna be going in, and I took my ring and I kind of have my ring supporting my coffee filter just like this. This is just gonna hold the coffee filter in place while you pour your liquid culture through and it filters through. So once you have your filter all set up, now you guys could start to pour your liquid culture mix through the filter. It should filter through really fast as long as you guys don't have very many solid particles floating around in your liquid culture. As you guys could see, it's all filtered through. So now what we could do is remove the coffee filter and we could place the lid that we're gonna put on there with our gas exchange hole and our self healing injection port. So once you guys have your permanent lid on there with your self healing injection port and your gas exchange hole, now we could pressure cook it. So if you guys want to take some tin foil and cover it over, that's perfectly fine. It really depends on what type of filter you're using. If you're using some type of synthetic filter disc or a syringe filter like that's on this jar lid right here, you really don't need to cover it over. But I suggest doing it anyways, especially if you guys are using micropore tape or polyfill or cellulose filter disc you guys are definitely gonna wanna cover it over before you guys pressure cook. Once you guys have it covered over, now what you wanna do is you wanna throw it in your pressure cooker for 45 minutes at 15 PSI. Now once the 45 minutes has passed, just shut off your pressure cooker, let the pressure build down, let the liquid culture cool to room temperature. This could take anywhere from, you know, 12 to 24 hours. I suggest giving it more time than, you know, you think because it could still be warm inside there and you don't want to put any spores or anything in there because it will just kill them if it's too hot. So definitely give it adequate time to cool down. So after it's cooled to room temperature, this is what you get. As you guys could see, it's nice and clear so you guys will be able to see your growth really, really easy. And the best part about it is like I said, this is a grain-based sugar. So there's gonna be no recovery time when you guys suck it up from your liquid culture. 
and inoculate your grains or whatever you guys are going to be inoculating. Now, of course, for you guys that want to use caro syrup or honey, that's perfectly fine. But this type of liquid culture is much more reliable and there's less room for error. So you don't have to worry about it not recovering. It should recover as long as it's healthy. You should have no issues. Now, the problem with most people when they make liquid culture is they, it looks great, the mycelium, you could see it visibly inside the jar. You suck some up with a liquid culture syringe, you knock up some grains or whatever, and then no growth happens. Two reasons for that. One is because it's not a grain-based sugar, just like we spoke about. Or what happened was they used too much sugars, which made the liquid culture toxic to the mycelium. So it won't recover, there'll be no growth when you guys go to inoculate your grains. Now. How you want to make sure you never go into that toxic range is really, really easy. You never want to go over 4% by weight or by volume. So like we did in this video, so we used a one quart jar with 600 milliliters of water and we used one gram of extra light malt extract. Now, if you guys were using 400 milliliters of water, you guys would use 0.667 of your sugar. So it doesn't matter which sugar it is. It could be caro syrup, it could be honey, or it could be light malt extract. It really doesn't matter. You guys don't want to pass that 4% mark. So always stick to them numbers and you guys will be perfectly fine and not have to worry about your liquid culture becoming toxic. Now, of course, liquid cultures are awesome. And when you guys do nail a liquid culture and everything goes right, you cut your colonization times in half, which means you could speed up the amount of grows you do. Same exact thing with agar, same exact thing with slurry. You're using a live tissue sample to inoculate your grains. You guys are skipping past the germination phase and just knocking it up with a live sample. Now, what I mean by germination is when you guys use a multi-spore syringe or a multi-spore print or a swab or something like that, you actually need two spores to start germinating. Once germination happens, that's when growth starts. So that could take a few days for all that to occur and then colonization starts. Now, when you guys use a liquid culture, slurry, agar, it's already colonized. It already went through the germination phase. You already have colonized live growth. And now you're gonna just be transferring that to a new substrate. In this case, grains or whatever you guys are gonna be inoculating. So it definitely helps speed things up. The other positive is once you guys have genetics that you really like, so you guys worked on agar, you guys isolated, you came to a monoculture, it's the perfect genetics. Now you could take that monoculture, some tissue from that, and put it to liquid culture if you guys want, let it colonize, and that's what's called a master LC. So now you have them genetics inside that liquid culture, and you guys could put them inside your refrigerator once they colonize some of the LC and save them long term. What the refrigerator does is it drops the temperature. When the temperature drops, mycelial growth slows down. So you're just slowing down growth. It's the same exact thing with a culture slant or if you guys put colonized agar dishes in the fridge, it's just dropping the temperature so that the movement of growth slows down. Now, of course, there comes a point when you guys are gonna have to knock up a new liquid culture with the master LC. You know, it doesn't last forever. So you guys are gonna have to make a transfer to a new LC, but that's perfectly fine. And you guys could go months, even years before you guys have to do that if you store them properly. This is my preferred method of liquid culture. Now, when I make a liquid culture, this is what I like to use. And I know it will work really well for you guys. Now, I wanna give a shout out to a couple Chip Team family members that are in the private chat. They're doing their own thing, either on Twitch and things like that. So to show them love and to get Chip Team family over to check them out, hook up with them and check out some of their content. I'm going to put some links down below so you guys could do that. I'm not a big gamer myself. We got a PlayStation 4 inside the Trip Team Family Studio, but it got dust on it. It literally never gets used. So I'm not a big gamer myself, but if you guys want to go check them out, show them that Trip Team Family love, I'm sure they'll definitely appreciate it. That will be down below. With that said, we got some great videos coming up. So make sure you guys stay tuned and you guys are up to date because we're going to be dropping a grow kit video. We're going to be dropping the web series really soon. So make sure you guys stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of great content that you guys are going to enjoy. With that said, thank you guys for all your love and support. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.